All right, welcome to example three for horizontal curves. Um, in this example, there's going to be a lot of little tricky things. It's going to be a pretty in-depth example. We're going to be using some bearings, and we're going to um, use what we know of horizontal curves to find a whole bunch of different parameters, right? So we have this horizontal curve, okay? And instead of giving us the EC and the BC, we have entry tangents, okay? So what I'm going to write here is um, we have a curve and the entry tangent, um, the entry tangent is north 47 degrees, 0, 3 minutes, 17 seconds west, and the exiting tangent, so exit, Exiting tangent, um, it has a bearing of north, 14 degrees, 34 minutes, 31 seconds east, okay? And before you start crying, um, bear with me, this is not as hard as it looks. Um, we also have actually a few other things. We have, this curve has a, a, a degree of curvature um, based on a chord definition of 8 degrees, Okay, so degree of curvature by chord is equal to 8 degrees, okay? And the ending curve, so EC is given, the EC is equal to 25 plus 0, 0, 0, 0, okay? And in this problem, we want to find what delta is. Delta, remember, is our interior angle. We want to find the radius. We want to find the length of this curve. We want to find the long chord of this curve. We want to find the tangent distance. And we also want to find um, the PI, the point of intersection. Okay, So the very first thing, let's, um, let's deal with these entry and exit bearings. Okay, Now, uh, the problem also says that this curve is to the right. Okay, So pretend you're driving in your car. And uh, let's say you're on the right side of the freeway and there's a curve coming up and it's to the right. So you're going to exit and you're going to be going this way, right? So let's actually draw this out. Let, let me, the first thing I want to do is I want to deal with these bearings, these entry and exit bearings, because right now they look kind of scary, but I promise you they are not that scary. The first thing I'm going to do, do is I'm going to draw this green line, okay? And this is going to represent north, okay? So this line is facing north, okay? Now, the entry bearing, okay? So let's say the middle of this line is, I don't know, somewhere here. And the entry bearing is north 47, 0, 3, 17 degrees west. So if I took my pen and I placed it on this line and it said north Actually, let me let me draw out the compass. You have north, we have south, we have west, we have east, right? So this is our compass. This entry bearing is going to be north, 47, uh, thir 3, 17, west. So it starts at north and ends at west. And west is this way, right? So I'm going to draw a line like this that goes through the middle, okay? And this angle right here, is the entry angle, right? It's 47, 0, 3, 17 seconds, okay? And the exiting bearing is going to be north, 14, 13, 31 east, okay? So we have north here, we have east here. This line is going to start north, it's going to turn east, okay? And it's a very, it's a smaller angle than 47, so I'm going to draw it a little, a little steeper here. So it goes here. Okay, and this angle here, okay, this angle here is 14, 13, 31, okay? And we said that the entry bearing is this bearing right here, okay? So this is where the curve enters. This is where you enter the curve, or this is where you start the curve. And the exiting bearing is this line, this 14, 13, 31, northeast, right? So this is where you're going to exit from the curve, okay? So what that means, and this curve, remember, is curving to the right. So it's curving this way. Here's the entry. 
here's the exit. I'm going to draw this curve just like that. And this curve is curving to the right, right? Right. Okay. So, to find now we you know, we took care of the entry bearing and we took care of the exiting bearing. Um, let's use this to find um, delta. Delta is the interior angle, right? So if we had our BC here and we had our EC here, remember when these two lines intersect, I hope I'm drawing this all right. When these two lines intersect, these should be straight. This is um, this is the the interior angle, and the distance from BC to this intersection and EC to this intersection, that's distance T, right? And we know from our definition that the um, angle that's here, right here, is also delta. So this delta is equal to this delta. And um, if you are confused by that, you can watch um, one, of, one of the videos a little earlier on that explains why this delta and this delta are equal, okay? But for this video, let's assume we know that this delta is equal to this delta. And we know what this angle is, right? Because we have the bearings for these two lines. We have this angle, I'm going to draw this in red, okay? We have this angle, all right? So if we add these two angles, if we add 47, 0, 3, 17, um, if we add that to this smaller angle, which is 14, 13, 31, uh, we should get an angle of 61, 37, 48 seconds, right? So this, this distance here is delta. Okay, awesome. We figured out what delta is. Uh, let's do the radius really quick, and we can continue on with the rest in another video. So the radius the radius for this curve, which is this distance right here, okay? The radius, we don't know what the radius is, but we do know what the degree of curvature is, okay? Since this is a chord definition, we need to use the formula LC. We need to use the chord. LC is equal to 2 R sine of delta, um, yeah, delta over 2. And since we're given the degree of curvature, we know that LC has to be 100. 2R sine of 8 degrees over 2, right? So if we solve for R, if we solve for R, our R is going to be 716.7 feet, okay? Cool. We figured out what R is, all right? So the last four uh, we'll do in the next video.